say, tell your neighbor and say, trusting God is the only way. Trusting God is the only way. Ryan there's a lady called Angelica. Hush. You are free. We, we, we need to pray for your house. Mm -hmm. And I believe this, whatever that is happening between you two, it must stop. Me? Are you hearing me? Me? Because of the way you people, you fight. And you find sometimes whatever that is happening there is not good. This disagreements that are there in the house. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Disagree me, so yes. I, I believe God will, will save your marriage. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still hearing this name. I don't know. This name is still coming to me. <sighs> Before you celebrate your 40th birthday, mm -hmm. There will be a breakthrough. Amen. Amen. I receive it. Right now, I receive it. You are 39, but before you, you reach 40, Amen. there will be a breakthrough. Amen. I receive that. Breakthrough. In the Come name on. of Jesus, I receive it. Come on. I receive it. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are free. I'm and still hearing amen. that this Carlo. Blessings, Apostle Makananisa and Prophet Simono. Blessings to your families as well. Also to the ministry, Charis in South Africa. This is Angelica Dominguez from California. I was born in Mexico and I have been residing here in the United States for the last 31 years. I want to share a bit of my testimony for the glory of God. It's a bit long, so I'm going to try to condense it and uh, make it short for the sake of this video. Uh, my father passed away in May of 2018. During that time, I had a challenge to my faith, which now I know I didn't really have faith. But what I thought I knew, I didn't know. And at that point, I started questioning what was the point of going to church if it was more of a social gathering? Because at that time, we were not going to a living church. We were um, attending just a regular church, and it just felt like dry my life just felt dry and just going to church I felt dry coming back from church I felt dry and I knew that there had to be more so together with my husband we started visiting different churches and at the same time I was praying for the Lord to restore my faith um, and it was in the year of 2019 that I had a dream and keep in mind that up to this point i haven't i haven't had dreams or if i did i didn't remember them so um this dream that i had was very vivid and so it just stuck to me and it was a dream of me being in a conference and a person that physically looked like apostle makananisa approached me and whispered something in my ear and at this time in my life I had no idea who Chari's missionary church was, I didn't know who Apostle Makananisa was, nor Prophet Simono. And, um, and so that dream was just vivid. It was a two-day conference, I dreamt that because in my dream I told my mom we have to come back tomorrow um, for the second day of the conference. So that dream happens in early 2019 and then in March my brother who um, at a very young age had been called to serve the Lord and um, pastoring um, he told me he told my mom that there was going to be a, a prophet and an apostle coming from South Africa to California so uh, and he sent us a bit of the flyer I immediately looked up the information on YouTube and found them and I said I need to go to this conference because I believe that this was the conference that I had dreamed up. So um, the conference was supposed to be Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I couldn't go Friday because Friday um, we were working. But then I found out that Friday, Fridays was canceled, that it was only Saturday and Sunday. So we went Saturday and Sunday. And I'm sorry that I'm crying, but this testimony is just brings so much joy to my heart so I cannot withhold the tears so anyways we go to the conference we have a blessed time Saturday 
And at this time, I had never seen a deliverance or manifestation in person. And that Saturday night, um, when I saw so much deliverance and so much manifestation, I was like, this is real. The God of the Bible is real. And um, at the end of the service, uh, they asked if anybody wanted to do a one-on-one -on -one to sign up. So I signed up. The following day, I went to church. Um ready for um the one-on-one -on -one. and um when i had the one-on-one -on -one with with uh, prophet andres he started telling me things of my life that no one knew like struggles in my marriage that only i and my husband knew he told me you've thought about leaving your husband but first he asked me he said where's your husband and i never wear my wedding ring because my fingers have gotten a little bit chubby <laughs> since I got married so uh, I don't wear it so there was no evidence in me that I was married a married woman but he asked me where's your husband and I told him my husband's at home and um, he said why isn't he here and I said to be, the, to be honest he doesn't believe in this kind of ministry and at that point, my husband had been walking or had been a professing Christian for about, I don't know, 15 years. And, um, but he didn't believe that God would appoint just one person to be a prophet. Um, he said he, if he wants to speak to people, he would speak, he would use anyone to speak to people. And, uh, so he didn't really believe in people that called themselves prophets. And, um, and also because we had been taught that there were so many false prophets, so never believe a prophet. Um, we never did believe that. So um, when I met with, with uh, Prophet Andres and he started asking me about my husband and why wasn't he there and I told him because he doesn't really believe in this, he said, okay, um, I know that. He's like, you guys are in different opposite directions. You are here and he's there. Uh, but God's going to use you to change his heart so that he can come and you together be in the same direction. And when he said that, I thought that's going to take a really, really long time for my husband to come and believe in this kind of stuff. And um, then he also told me the struggles that I was having in my marriage. He mentioned that um, there was instances I wanted to leave my husband. And it was true because he battles or he battled with um, the spirit of lust and that made me feel very angry towards him and not valued to the point where I just wanted to walk away. But when, uh, when Prophet told me don't leave him because he's gonna use you to change his heart, that was just a breath of fresh air. Then he also told me, tell me about your children. And I started telling him about my two children that I had at that time. And he said, what about the third one? And um, I said, I can't have any more children. I'm 40. And he looked at me in the eyes and he said, you're not 40, you're 39. And at that time, I was like, how does he know my age? And then I realized then that I was not talking to an ordinary man, but I was talking to a man of God. And... Um, so I was just blessed by that. He also told me that he saw a lot of debt in my life. And it was it's true. At that point, I had a lot of debt. Um, close to like $14,000 that I owed in credit cards. And um, then he also said something about my mother. He said, where's your mom? And I said, my mom, she's outside in the congregation. He said, we also need to pray for her. So the prayer happened and um, there was deliverance that day when he prayed for me um, because I heard him say demon out. And in my head, I was like, I cannot be demon possessed. I've gone to church. There's no possible way that I can be demon possessed, but I was. And so, um, he told me before you turn 40 you will see your breakthrough and um, we left the conference and but before that at the end we met in the morning I met with Prophet Andreas in the morning for the one-on-one -on -one, and then at the end of the service Apostle Makananisa gave Prophet Andreas the time to prophesy to a couple of the people in the congregation 
and prophet andres uh got up there and he said i keep on hearing the name angelica and that was me i was the only angelica in the congregation and i rose my hand and it was something funny because he just made this gesture like Aish, i've already spoken to you uh so that was kind of a neat moment and then at the end he he continued to say i keep i keep on hearing this name angelica and he just reiterate what he had told me that i was 39 now but by the time i was going to turn 40 I was going to have a breakthrough. So anyways, going back to the part of the prophecy, uh, he said you will be, he prayed for financial freedom. And today, uh, February 2021, there's no more financial debt to my name. Everything was paid out and I don't even know how it was paid out. I just made my payments and all my credit cards are zero balance so i give glory and honor to god to that for that and then um the week that the conference ended that same week i think it was on a wednesday um april 10th my mom she fell and she hit the back of her head where she lost consciousness so we took her to the emergency room and one of the songs that was sang during the conference was um, by Apostle Makananisa. He was saying, this mountain has been removed. This mountain has been removed. So when I took my mom to the emergency room and they were saying that she had a bleeding in her brain and that there was a possibility that they needed to do brain surgery to extract that blood. I just kept on singing that song. This mountain has been removed. This mountain has been removed and continued to pray. And by God's glory, um, there was no surgery to be done by the third day of my mom being in ICU. They did a CAT scan and they noticed that the blood was being absorbed by her own brain, by her own body. So um, they canceled the surgery. So I give glory to that, to God for that. And um, and then the baby, we now have a little baby, which now I want to introduce. I want to introduce my husband to you, Danny Lopez, and my little daughter. And so here's my husband, Danny. <laughs> God bless you and blessings, and then, prophet and, and apostle. And then here's my daughter, Amelie. Mm -hmm. And then here's the little baby who's now trying to sleep. And then this is my other little son. His name is Elias. And so we just want to give glory because even, even through the process of the pregnancy, um, there was some challenges uh, where we're going to get her out of the room. Let me take her out of the room. <laughs> uh, there was some challenges in the pregnancy where they had said there was something wrong with her kidneys. And they had said it could be related to Down syndrome. And of course, they asked if we wanted to terminate the pregnancy. And they said, that's not a choice for me. They wanted it to run uh, more more tests and I didn't want them to be run uh, because I knew that the God that God had spoken and there was another baby coming in the way and um, so I just trusted in that and delivery time comes and her heart stopped twice because she had a cord wrapped around her neck um, but we called our pastor and our pastor said the lord has given me a prayer for you guys to repeat and it was son of david have mercy on me and deliver this child safely so we prayed that prayer from like two o'clock in the morning until about 8 a.m which was when my body was ready to deliver this baby and when i was ready to deliver this baby the doctor said look at the monitor and see how the heart is diminishing the rate is coming down um you have to push this baby with everything you have inside of you and i thought great i have jesus inside of me so i know i'm gonna push and um we did four pushes and the baby was out the doctor saw she had the cord wrapped around her neck three times 
And she said, that's very unusual. It's common to have it once, not so common twice, unusual three times, and sometimes they see four, four times wrapped around the neck. But, um, but praise God, the baby didn't need to be in NICU. Everything was perfect with the little baby, and it is now. And so we just want to give glory to God for everything he has done for. We have a healthy little girl. Um, and now financially free from debt. And then here's my husband who now also is part of a living church and has also now come to accepting and I'll let him give a little bit of his testimony. Uh, blessings, brothers. Yes, um, pretty much what my, my wife echoed. Um, I went to many churches, um, maybe like 18 years of different churches and um, believing that I thought I knew the Word of God, that I thought I knew who Jesus was or God was, but only realizing that it was just, I did not know who this living God was. So I was always hesitant about people who took the name apostle or prophet, and I always wondered why, why, why did they take that? It just seemed more of um, something prideful that I thought in my eyes at that time, until I realized that once the Lord um, started to open up my eyes that God is the one who calls people and gives them these titles. And so, um, so yeah, so praise God. Um, I thank the Lord for working in my life, um, working in our lives. Uh, we know that uh, the process of deliverance is, is continuous. It's, it's ongoing and that we need to stay close to Jesus in order to maintain this deliverance, in order to maintain uh, freedom from, from the enemy from uh, demons that are always on attack so uh, but we just want to thank you I, I, I didn't go to the conference and I was joking with my mother-in-law and my, uh, my wife I'm like I'm not gonna go so they can hit me on the head <laughs> I'd rather just stay home <laughs> because I saw that they were, the apostle would hit on the head and I'm like well that's kind of that seems kind of hard but uh, now I know that how how God works and um, so we thank uh, we thank the Lord for uh, your ministry, for your lives. Uh, we, we, we uh, from time to time, we listen to your to your prayers, and uh, so we just want to say thank you, and the Lord bless you guys, and and continue your ministry, yes. and that you would uh, you, your families, and your and your church congregation will remain faithful to the end. So, so uh, we thank you, and we just also want to bless you with an offering that uh, we feel the Lord is putting upon our hearts to do that um, and so we will be sending an offering and, and as the lord directs you to use that uh so be it as the lord directs you to use that so thank you so much thank you and god bless you god bless and you uh we look forward to we will be praying for the tour that you guys have planned to come back to the united states we'll be praying for that that god would be the one guiding it mm -hmm. and providing for it and um we'll also be praying for the Lord to allow us to go wherever you will be, if you will come to California, if you'll be in Dallas, then for God to make a way for us to get over there. Uh, but we will keep that in our prayers. We love you guys and thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Bye-bye.